Hey, Scott Larry, the CruiseGenius.com. Grab a cup of coffee or a Dr. Pepper and sit back and relax. Here's my review of the Celebrity Reflection. Now, I do have to give a shout out to Fairfield Inn and Suites uh, in Dania Beach. And if you Google it, it's uh, Fairfield Inn and Suites, uh, Cruise Port uh, Airport Hotel. Very, you can look at the airport basically from the hotel. But the wife and I stayed there the night before the cruise. I never recommend driving down you know, day of or flying in day of your cruise because something's going to happen and you're going to miss the cruise ship and you're going to be upset. So my wife and I drove down from Jacksonville to uh, Port Everglades, stayed at the Fairfield Inn and Suites. It is uh, undergoing some remodeling, but it won't bother you at all because everything's still good to go. We had a very nice room, had a refrigerator. Uh, it was a studio suite where you had the bedroom and you have uh, a little living area there. So you have two TVs, you got the a refrigerator, you got a coffee machine, you got everything you need, big bathroom. You'll love it, Fairfield Inn and Suites. Okay, so let's talk about the Celebrity Reflection. Now, this is my second time on Celebrity. My friend Doug Parker of Cruise Radio and I uh, sailed on Celebrity Solstice when she first came out many years ago. And uh, the Reflection is one of the Solstice class ships. It actually has grass on the top deck where you can play croquet or you can uh, putt some balls. Very, very cool, all right? So uh, we woke up in the morning and this is, this is critical. You can request a boarding time. And so when we when I booked the cruise, the only boarding, well, they had like 12.30, 1, 1.32, 2.30. So I picked the earliest what was 12.30, which is kind of late for me, you know, because I want to get on the ship as soon as possible to start my vacation, right? And we left on a Monday, came back on a Friday, Bimini, Coco Cay. So I have my 12.30 boarding time. Well, at the Fairfield Inn Suites, they have, you know, parking for your car. And they also have the transfer to the cruise port. And so we had this 12.30 boarding time, but the shuttle left at 10, 8, 10 or 10.30, I think. No, it was 10.15. It was 10.15 is when the shuttle left. We didn't actually pull away till like 10.30. And we had to stop at the Disney ship first. And so we got to the uh, Celebrity Reflection Terminal 25 around 11, 11.15 or so. And I'm thinking, man, we're here early. Are we going to have to stand out there in a long line like we had to stand in a long line at uh, Port Canaveral when we had to board the MSC Seashore? And man, if it's raining, it's going to be miserable if you're standing out there. Well, thank you, Terminal 25. Thank you, Celebrity. <clears throat> because we got off our shuttle and, you know, the, the porters were right there. Be sure to tip the porters. And we went right up the escalator went right through security, went to be checked like two more times. And then we were sitting down in a very nice area. And if you look in my, at my YouTube channel about, you know, the boarding, I mean, it's a huge area. It's nice. It's comfortable. There's bathrooms. Very, very nice in Terminal 25. Very modern. But what I'm trying to get across is it doesn't matter what your boarding time says on your boarding pass. You could pretty much, we got there like 11.15, even though I had a 12.30 boarding time, and they let us in. They didn't say go somewhere else, come back, we don't like you. The people were so kind. I saw uh, another video that said, a YouTube video that was saying how kind the people were. It's like they were going on the cruise. They were, so, everybody was kind. Going up the escalator, you know, everything. Oh, and I will say, we did have our carry-on, and that's a story. I did have my little rolling carry-on thing, but they don't want you going on the escalator. They want you going on the elevator. So Marty and I went over to the side with a little carry thing and went up the elevator, which was kind of cool. Let me tell you my story about this. You know, on some cruise lines, you're not allowed to take water or soda. Well, on Celebrity, you are allowed to take soda and water. You know, as much as you can carry is what they say. So I had a 12 pack of Dr. Pepper and I had like a six pack of Zephyr Hills water. The mistake I made was leaving my 12 pack of Dr. Pepper in the car overnight at the Fairfield Inn and Suites. I knew to take it in the room because you know what's gonna happen. I think I may have a can here. I guess I don't see one. If it, a soda can, if it gets too hot, will expand. 
and that's bad news because it could pop, right? Well, in the morning when I went to get my 12 pack of Dr. Pepper out of the car, it was leaking. The, the 12 pack box was leaking. And so I found the soda that was leaking, rinsed off all the other cans and my friend Fernando, who I've known for many years with the uh, transfer company, got me a plastic bag and put the other 11 sodas in it. And I was really concerned that the security person at the port would say, hey, hey, you know, come on. Well, I rinsed off the cans and put them in my little backpack and security at Terminal 25, 25 said, yes, no problem. Well, another one of my cans burst. And as my, my wife and I were going up the gangway, somebody said, sir, your bag's leaking. And another one of my soda cans was leaking. So here's a tip. If you're gonna carry soda, make sure that the cans are not expanded. So you won't have that. And see, I have a bungee cord that I usually wrap my uh, 12 pack of sodas around on the top of my thing so it goes quicker. Anyway, and of course the six pack of water was great because I think waters were like three or four bucks a, a, for water on the, for a you know bottle of purified water on the ship. So what I'm saying is you can carry soda and water on Celebrity as much as you can carry. Just be mindful of it not being too hard to carry it. So as I was saying, it was great. It was the best experience I think I've ever had going up that escalator, going through security, sitting down for maybe 15, 20 minutes max. And we got on the ship probably 1130, quarter to 12, which was way before my 1230 boarding time. Now you're going to say, hey, Scott, I'm going to say, hey, what? Were the, were the cabins ready? Well, that's cool about celebrity too. You don't need faster to the fun. You don't need faster to the fun. Um, we got on the ship. Now, let me give you this tip too. You don't have to wait to get on the ship and get on the ship's Wi-Fi to do the online muster drill check-in. When I was still at the hotel, I got like a text or something that said, hey, you know, watch these videos online here on the Celebrity app. And so I watched a video about, you know, the the video plays about the the sound of the, you know, bum, 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 bum. they want you to hear that sound of the uh, emergency signal. So that's one of the videos. And then there's another video, lasts a couple minutes talking about it. And then uh, the last thing was, was the, there was one more thing that he had to do. But if you click all those, oh, the third thing was, you got to click, or the ship has to click actually, that you attended the muster drill. So let me review, because I'm being blonde. Number one, the first video is like a two or three minute video talking about the muster drill and about the safety stuff. The second video you will watch is the sounds of the emergency, bum, 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 bum. That's the second video. And then the third part is the muster person will check you in saying that you did go to the muster station. So I did all that at the hotel, I, two of the three. And so when we got on the ship, we're on deck five when we boarded and I knew my muster station, it was the ensemble lounge, the ensemble lounge. So we hung a lap, well, I asked, right? I mean, I'm, I'm the kind of guy I'm gonna ask. So we get, and I already knew where it was, but I wanted to make sure. We get on the ship and I asked one of the crew members there, hey, where's the ensemble lounge? Right this way, sir. So I said to my wife, honey, follow me. We're gonna get the mustard drill out of the way. So we got go to the ensemble lounge and a, a very nice young man from the Ukraine uh, was standing there and uh, I showed him my boarding pass. I did not have to go up to my room, to the cabin, to get my card key to show him that. The, the paper boarding pass that you have when you are checking in is good enough, okay? So, because that was one of the questions I asked before we went on the ship. So I had the printed out board, and let me just say this about the printed out boarding passes. Don't rely, don't rely on your cell phone to, to show your boarding pass. You wanna be cool, it's 2024. Stuff happens, you know, the lighting, the this, the that. Please, print out your boarding pass. So that's what I did. It makes it easier for you, for the crew, for the staff, for everybody, it makes it easier. So when we, we saw the young man in our muster station, the ensemble lounge, deck five, 
I handed him the boarding passes. He, you know, scanned them. And then he looked to see that my wife and I had completed step one and two of the uh, mustard drill process. And then he showed us the life preserver and he showed us the whistle. Have a nice day. So then we were able to go to deck eight, which our cabin number was 8304 balcony uh, aft. Now I will tell you, I love the elevators. I love them much better than those smart elevators on the MSC seashore where, you know what I'm saying? It, you've heard these smart elevators. I don't know how smart they are, but I love the ones on Celebrity Reflection. They're, they're old school, but they work great. And we didn't have to really wait very long. Oh, and let me say this while I, while I can say it. Celebrity is 40 plus, okay? There were a lot of go-go scooters. There were a lot of wheelchairs. So just put it in your heart. You're gonna have to be patient because, I mean, it's, it's not as much as on Holland America, but uh, there were a lot of people in go-go scooters and uh, just be aware of that. So anyway, we go to the muster station, we get that done, we go up to uh, deck eight, 8304. And the big question is, can you, you just drop off your stuff and come back at 1.30 like they tell you, or could you stay? Well, we go up to the cabin, it was already prepared, it was already clean, it was already ready to go. And I said, hey, you know, here we are. Now granted, uh, we hadn't got our luggage uh, to us yet, but we did have our roll-on luggage, like with medication, with my shaving cream, with Marty's makeup, uh, my cell phone charger, that kind of stuff. So we started unpacking, and then our cabin steward came and uh, hey, no, you can stay, everything's fine, which is cool, right? Uh, who wants to get on the ship, drop off your bag, and yeah, I get it, you go and walk around, whatever, but it's kind of nice to decompress a little bit before you uh, go on. And I think the ship left like at 3.30 that day, left very early. So we, and the, the balcony was great, it's old school. You don't need your card key to put in there to keep the lights on. Uh, old school thermostat, you know, um, but everything was perfect. The, the bathroom was bigger than most cruises we've been on, uh, with the exception of, you know, when we stayed in the captain's suite on the Carnival Sunshine. But uh, it has a capsule, so there's definitely more room in there. And again, hats off to Celebrity for having that bar so women can put their foot up on the bar to shave the legs. So I guess they had like seven women who designed the solstice cabins and uh, like the rounded bed, the neutral colors, all that kind of woman stuff. All right, so we did not eat in any of the specialty restaurants, but the Opus dining room was great. We had anytime dining, which we got down there like quarter to six. And there was one night we were able to get a table by the window, because my, my wife likes that, like every other wife likes that. But you gotta get there early if you wanna get a table there, uh, a table near the window. But the food was absolutely great, the escargot, they had beef wellington one night. Uh, the food was very, very, very good. The food up in the Ocean View Cafe, the Lido Deck, was very good. The, the crew was very nice, very, very kind. The great food selection. And so we went to, uh, our first stop was Ocean K. Now, let me just say this first. I'm the kind of guy that looks at the weather report two weeks before. And I gotta quit doing that because the weather reports were saying rain, 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 and we had a shore excursion in Bimini and I was concerned we'd be rained out, but perfect seas, perfect weather, perfect, perfect, perfect on, on that. The waves were like glass, you know, and I'm a Navy veteran, but the waves were like glass. So uh, we had the first day was a sea day and that was fine. Uh, you'll see one of my YouTube videos about the officers versus guest volleyball game. That's cool. Take a look at that video. Everybody was loving it. And even if you're watching. The one thing, you know, you're going to ask about the entertainment. Now, we didn't go to any of the shows, but I, I did leave this on my celebrity survey. And celebrity, you need to listen to this if you can. The music in the atrium area was very loud. Now, I'm not an 80 year old guy, hey, turn it down. But it was loud and somebody from Celebrity needs to go on the ship and with a decimal meter or something because it was deafening. Uh, we'd walk by, you know, from the Opus dining room, you know, over there by the 
by the atrium to catch, and it was just like blasting. And listen, I love Elton John, I love ABBA, all the music, but there was no way you could sit in that lounge comfortably, in my opinion, because the music was so loud. And I talked to several other people on the ship, uh, and they said the same thing, it was loud. And again, I'm not a grumpy old man, I love music, but we could not sit there and hear it. And I, I told one of the Mater D's about it, and he said he understood. So hopefully, celebrity, if you're watching this video, turn it down. Uh, okay, so Ocean View Cafe was great. Oh, the Mast Grill. You've got to go up to the Mast Grill. They got great burgers, hot dogs, french fries. They have the condiments. Abs the Mast Grill is a must if you want to grab a burger or something. So our sea day was great. Now, the next day we pulled into Coco Cay. Now, I'm going to give you one of my secrets, one of the hidden gems that people always ask. Tell me the hidden gems. Well, who'd you book your cruise with? Ask them about the hidden gems. Don't ask on Facebook groups. But I'll tell you a hidden gem. I've always recommended to my audience to get off the ship as soon as humanly possible when you go into a port. If it's Half Moon K, if it's Bimini, if it's Coco K. Why? Especially if it's a private island. So you can get a good chair, get a good place. I've said this a thousand times, I'll say it one more time. It's always Caitlin, never Tom. Caitlin, slow cup of coffee, ponder the day, be on Facebook for an hour, be on Instagram for another hour, sit around, read a book, sit, 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 vacation. And then when they get to wherever, Tom, get us a good chair. Yes, princess, yes, queen, I obey. And all the chairs are gone, why? Well, Caitlin, because you sat, if I ever meet Caitlin, I hope she doesn't hit me. Uh, it's because you wanted to be on vacation and go slow. Well, all those chairs are gone. And so my wife and I got off at Coco K, one of the first ones off, and I immediately started getting video and we took the free tram. Now there's a free tram that'll take you all around the island. There's free things to do on Coco K and there's costly things to do on Coco K. Uh, one is the, the helium balloon ride. That's pretty cool. So we got on the tram and the third stop was South Beach. Now South Beach is free, but that's good for sedentary people and active people. They have paddle ball, they have basketball, table. There's lots of things that non-sedentary people or young people would like to do. But they have the snack shack where they have burgers and funnel cake and hot dogs and French fries and condiments and uh, that kind of stuff. So South Beach, you gotta go to South Beach, but you gotta get there early because there are limited chairs and limited umbrellas that are free, but if you want a good location, get there early. So Coco K was on a scale of one to 10 to 20. Absolutely perfect. The, the team members there were perfect. It was an absolutely perfect day at Coco K, 100%. Then the next day we went to Bimini. Now I've been to Bimini twice. Uh, I was once on Virgin Voyages, which was great because there was no confusion when we went over to the, uh, the beach club there, right? You have your wristband, and if you got a bar tab, you can use your bar tab over there. But when we went, when my wife, my son-in-law, daughter, and the kids, grandkids went there on Carnival Liberty, there's lots of questions. You get food, you get this, you get that. You get lots of questions, lots of confusion. You gotta buy a uh, shore excursion and it's gonna cost you to get lunch and whatever. So we went to Bimini and again, got out. now let me tell you about Bimini. We had a tour got a tour set up, Bimini Island Tours. Max was our tour guide, and I reached out to them before I went. Oh, and let me say this too while I'm thinking about it. A lot of people will ask me as an influencer, hey, Scott, uh, was this a free trip? Well, here's the deal. I'm also a travel agent. So it was a deeply discounted tri trip. I did have to pay taxes and I did have to pay tips, which I'd pay anyway. I never pull my tips off. So was it a free comped trip? No, I paid taxes and I paid tips. So it wasn't free. All right, full disclosure. All right, so Bimini Island Tours. I reached out to them before the cruise because my wife said, hey, I just don't wanna to go to the beach and sit around. I wanna, the culture, I wanna know, I wanna see, I wanna to touch, I wanna to taste. Great. So I reached out to Bimini Island Tours and they gave us a complimentary tour. I'll be honest with you. And, but I did tip Max, our tour guide. And I'll be posting to thecruisegenius.com, my website, pictures. 
But Max was absolutely incredible. We met him at one o'clock at the uh, casino entrance uh, there of the hotel. We took the free tram over there and we were in an air conditioned van and he took just the two of us, just Marty and I. If you're going to Bimini, reach out to Bimini Island Tours, tell them Scott Lara sent you and you will have a blast. He took us to Radio Beach. He took us to the Dolphin Museum. He took us to a live conch demonstration where the guy busted the shell and took the thing out and, you know, and pretty cool. He also took us, also took us to a local bakery and we got to sample some of the food. The Dolphin Museum, there's a lot of history to that too. But anyway, Bimini Island Tours. Thank you, Max. Be sure to check them out. Look on TripAdvisor. Look, just Google them. You'll see them. So then uh, we get back to Port Everglades and we had luggage tag like 35. Now you've seen the videos of the MSC Seashore, which I agree is a bigger ship, but it's like controlled chaos getting off the MSC Seashore. But with this, with Celebrity, we had breakfast up in the Lido deck and we were probably off the ship by nine o'clock. We didn't have, we could have if we wanted to because they wanted you to go to the main theater to sit and wait until they called our luggage tag. But we actually sat, I think, up on deck six and a, lounge, a little lounge area up there is more comfortable. Waited to be called and it was seamless, seamless getting off the ship. We go out, we grabbed a porter, gave him, gave him 10 bucks because we had like two bags. And he took us to the taxi area. The porter said a lot of people don't tip. Folks, please tip those porters if they're taking your bags. But anyway, he got us to the cab and we were back to the uh, hotel within 15 minutes and it cost us about, I don't know, 25, 27 bucks. I, I tipped that guy too. So overall, Food on the Celebrity Reflection, a 10. The Lido Deck, the Ocean View Cafe, 10. The Mass Grill, 10. The Ship, 10. Uh, there, there are just a couple little quirks, I guess. Our cabin steward needed to be trained better on when to clean the cabin. And I tipped him right away. And my wife hates it when I tip the cabin steward immediately because she will say, if you tip him now, he won't go the extra mile. Well, I want him to know that I appreciate him, him or her. So I tipped my cabin steward $20, and I really didn't have any special requests except maybe for a couple blankets. But his timing of trying to clean the cabin was way off. Like we'd be out of the cabin, and he, they clean it twice, right? They clean the cabin twice. Hi, Carnival. Uh, they clean it twice. But it seemed like we'd be out of the cabin for a long period of time, and we'd come back, and then he'd come around, oh, hey, I'm here. Okay, here's our dirty towels, give us clean ones, goodbye. You know, and so that, that was a little frustrating that he, his timing was off. Uh, the only other thing that was a little frustrating, I mean, we did go to early dining and this is another one of those hidden gems. I firmly believe to go to dinner early. Why? The waiters are fresher, the food is fresher. It, it just, when you go early, it just seems to, and they're trying to get you going. I mean, if you go to dinner late, you know, they're gonna be a little more tired. It's gonna be a little bit slower. So if you don't want a long dinner experience, definitely go early. And it's more likely you can get a table for two, which we did have a table for two on each dinner, but there were people like right next to us. But having that table, now some people say, I wanna meet new people. Great, meet new people. I, I'm fine with meeting new people and sometimes people recognize me, which is fine. But going about early dining, our waiter, Meet, M-E-E-T, very nice guy, but his assistant was very slow on refilling the water. Now, I get it, uh, a lot of tables, they're very busy. I mean, did that totally ruin it? Absolutely not. But I did put it in my survey that our waiter, Meet, did a great job, but the, the his assistant, uh, you know, needed some training. The ship, overall, a 10, with the exception of that very loud music in the atrium. The crew, I went to the uh, VIP captain's welcome because I'm like select uh, on captain's club. Got to talk to the captain, talk to uh, several of the other staff, talk to the cruise director. So embarkation was seamless. Disembarkation was seamless. 
Would I go on Celebrity Reflection again? I'd go tomorrow. I mean, I love it. These, these shorter cruises are great. I mean, I, sure, seven day, 14 day, yeah. But just, you know, leaving on Monday, coming back on Friday, absolutely perfect. If you have any questions, email me directly, slayer1961 at gmail.com. Thank you, Celebrity, uh, for this discounted cruise. Thank you, Bimini Island Tours, for the tour. Thank you uh, to gigsky.com, who helped sponsor this uh, trip. gigsky.com. Scott Lair, the cruise genius.com. Like and subscribe.